What's up, everybody? Welcome to Let's Play Orion Trail with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony, and this is Orion Trail. This is a game that was kickstarted back in February 2015 and is available for purchase through Steam, Itch, and Gangel. Those links and some others will be available in the video description. This game is a lot like Oregon Trail and has been described as Oregon Trail meets Star Trek, which I would say is a very accurate description. I acquired this game through a good bundle on itch.io, which is unfortunately no longer available. Let's just jump right into a game. Look, play here, and I've beaten it a couple times already, as you can see here. These medals indicate that I've beaten the game mode. Uh, the sim this symbol indicates that these are locked, and you can see this one is unlocked. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna just use, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start a game of, of the smallest type. The Wilkie May, a sister galaxy to our own, the Wilkie May is nearly identical. Efforts to explore this sector have been put off because it's really annoying to refer to by name. We'll just engage here. <clears throat> Alright, so first we have to pick a captain. Basically, each... We, we need to pick the entire bridge crew. Uh, and each one has stats. And the first one, the captain, will have five. The next one will have four then three, then two. I don't think it goes down to one. So we can choose between Captain Flight that has three tactics and two science, or Mermit the Lizard, uh, who has three diplomacy and two science, or we can go with the Space King. He's got two diplomacy and three bravado. I think more often than not, we see science and diplomacy, at least in my experience with the game, and it could be, you know, totally random, and is totally random, but we're gonna go ahead and say Mermet the Lizard, except I wanna turn the music volume down a little. I did, and it looks like it reset to a previous level. Can you hear me? That's good. Okay, uh, resume game. Pick your first officer, Harrison Benoit, Danalog, or Rarit Dorschel? <clears throat> we want to get a little bit of a balance going on through here. I think maybe we boost science and bravado a little bit. We don't want to leave attack completely unfilled, uh, but I think right now we'll probably get another attack option, so we'll just go with this. We could rename the people, but we'll stick with their default names for now. Alright, Wolfgang Wesker has attack and science. Ted Barnett has attack and science. Oh, Wolfgang also has tactics. And Yo-Yo Hainbear has attack, diplomacy, and science. Um, we don't need to boost science two more, but we could stand to boost our diplomacy a little bit more. You'll see how these stats work out later. Percival Squiddlevoss, Anagail Levenger, or Gardenia Verdart for our communications officer. If you haven't seen already from my previous videos, names are not my strong suit. Um, tactics is kind of lacking, and we don't have an option for that. So, I guess we, we'll probably just boost our um, diplomacy and attack. It, having two things at five is a, is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll do this. So that's our whole crew picked out. And this is our goal, and we have a short way to go from the beginning of the Wilkie May to the end. Choose our starting resources. So now we have to choose between if we want crew members, food, fuel, or a stronger hull, and we have eight credits to uh, divvy up between them. We will put two into each, I think. Um, regardless of the amount of crew you have, you will always consume the same amount of food. We'll launch. I thought it would increase. I thought the amount of food you consumed would increase based on the crew. And that, that is not the case. Now we need to choose, just like in FTL, we need to choose a beacon to go to, essentially. And our two choices here are the Orange Nebula, which has a mystery bonus. And it says, shifting browns and oranges make up this murky cloud formation. Uh, this one has plus gas. A collection of space rocks and debris. What are the next ones? Mystery, hull, and mystery. So I think we're gonna go to the orange nebula here. 
Because there's nothing we particularly need at this exact moment. So there's no sense in specifically targeting gasoline. Alien science vessel. The sensors detect a highly advanced alien science vessel ahead. It seems to be conducting invasive and elaborate scans of your ship. You make a note to change your password and prepare to take action. All right, we've got three options of things to do. Uh, with attack, we can give them a nice missile to scan. That's our two bonus here. With diplomacy, we can hail them and clear your throat loudly. Or with bravado, we could throw a party and invite them. Obviously, we want to go with the one with the highest thing here or the one we need the most in more desperate situations and since we don't need anything we'll get the one that gets us gas but has the potential of losing us crew members and now we come to our probability drive which is the core mechanic of how things happen in the game I guess <clears throat> so we have a bonus of plus five which is gonna turn these X's into check marks and then it'll spin the wheel and it'll either land on this skull, which is a critical failure, uh, the X's, which are failures, or in our case, we got a uh, success. And then the blue star would have been a critical success, which is, you know, even better on top of the good. So we're going to continue here with our success. They apologize, admitting they didn't think you were intelligent enough to detect their scans. They wish to follow you and document the rest of your mission. Offering some fuel as a gift, you welcome the documentalians aboard. So now we have plus 80 gas and plus two crew members moving on. All right, really good encounter for our first one. There's an anomaly detected up here. So yeah, I'm gonna be not doing a regular series of this game. I just, I enjoyed playing it the first couple times. We can get plus mystery or plus hull. Uh, plus hull also, actually plus mystery gets us this advance, advancement here where we don't have to necessarily go to either of these two. Oh, and we can't go to this one, which is plus mystery. I still think we want to get plus hull, just in case. Um, we can run out of fuel without dying. We we have to put up a beacon and wait for someone to come give us fuel. We can run out of food without dying. We just start to starve and things start to go wrong. We can run out of crew without dying because we have our bridge crew that only dies if their HP runs out. But if we run out of hull, we die instantly. So I think we want to boost our hull by going to the Class X Dwarf Star set of course. I'm also going to be playing some of the other games that came in a good bundle. Uh, we've encountered a gravestone. Let's pay our respects. Ben Lyon, everything in his life he did slow until the end where he descended too fast. That's nice. And uh, one of your officers notices a star chart chiseled into the gravestone. After scanning and taking a few notes, they learn something new. Plus one science to our captain. We can get plus... Is that our captain? I think it is. We can get plus uh, stats and minus stats from random encounters to any of our bridge crew members. Moving on. Um, I really want to play from a good bundle. I also want to play Nuclear Throne and Among the Sleep. I'm particularly excited about playing Among the Sleep because that's one that I want to do blind and I've been excited about that for a couple years but then I totally forgot about it for a while and I'm, I'm really excited to play that one. Your communications officer say, says that uh, you are being hailed by an unknown vessel floating in deep space. A shady figure appears on the hollow screen offering repairs in exchange for some fuel. We can scan his cargo load, which is what we're going to do. We can say you have no fuel, or we can tell him to stick him up. Let's scan his cargo hold. That's the most likely success. And engage. Actually, if we had... Right, there are eight X's on the probability drive right now. If we had more than eight science bonus, that would turn all eight X's into successes. Ignore the critical failure because you can't get rid of that and then turn one or more uh, green check marks into blue stars for critical successes If you were to get really high bonuses, which in the the Wilkie may is not very likely Critical success pretty awesome. We'll continue here and see what we got your sensors find life signs He's carrying slaves your engineer team secures a lock on them and beams the slaves aboard They gratefully join your crew as you speed off one of them is also handy with a wrench too. So we got plus three to our hull, up to 11, and plus eight crew members. That was amazing. We've had a pretty lucky game so far. It doesn't always go this well in the first two encounters. 
Moving on to our only choice here is the Red Nebula. The threat level is one, and a collection, it says it's a collection of space dust and ionized gas will set a course. I may play this game more, I may not. This might be a one-off thing, and if, uh, if I get comments saying you, you want to see more, I will gladly oblige to that. I may do it on my own as well, I'm not really sure what the plan is here. Oh, the huge manatee, an enormous space manatee looms before the ship. Per the secondary directive, you order the ship to engage the majestic creature for science. Uh, closer, closer, too close, the manatee lunges, swallowing the ship whole. We've got three options here. As always, we can shoot our way out, we can communicate with the creature, or we can go to ramming speed. Uh, we're going to communicate with the creature. We've got good diplomacy. No reason not to use it. You turn on the exterior speakers and hope that the creature understands your attempts to communicate. We will engage, convert some of these failures to successes, and hope for the best. Another critical success, I don't think, even in the longer game I played, uh, the, the second option, don't remember the name of it, I don't think I had two critical successes in a single game. I don't think in the first game I played, I had any. That was, two in a row is, at least for me, unheard of. Continue. I think each tile has an equal chance of being landed on, so the fact that we got two critical successes in a row is awesome whoops sorry a deep phlegmy voice rumbles all around you the creature horks you out and you apologize to each other for the misunderstanding you later discover the creature's saliva is surprisingly nutrient rich tastes terrible though we got plus 75 food which is awesome and plus one science this is going really well we've trained science twice in the first like three encounters i can't believe it all right class zero star class zero stars are young and hot like temperature hot not attractive good to know and class b star bluish star it has the blues we don't need food we might gain food from this this is the mystery symbol it can gain anything for us we're gonna set a course for that one i like doing mystery ones when there's nothing we particularly need you and the crew have been planning it for weeks a surprise party in the cafeteria for your first officer as you're walking down the hall toward the cafeteria your first officer admits that they really really hate surprise parties uh-oh uh, we can either not spoil the surprise or spoil the surprise. These options are the same. Both give us a plus mystery or minus mystery. Uh, I think it's going to be a good idea to not spoil the surprise. It, it doesn't matter in the slightest. You know what? Maybe your first officer just hasn't, hasn't had a good surprise party. This one will be so good it'll change their mind. Seriously, the door is open. Engage. <laughs> You can also change the speed of the probability drive. Success. Not critical, but didn't expect it to be. Everyone leaps out from behind their hiding places. Surprise, your first officer turns to you looking a little peeved, but before the long party is a smashing success. Plus one, two bravado. That was awesome. Real happy with that. Training stats is not this normal. A collection of space rocks and debris in this asteroid belt. It's our only choice. Let's go to it. Gonna drink some coffee real quick. Once again, we've encountered a gravestone. Sensors indicate that there is some sort of floating mem memorial nearby. Your navigator asks if you want to make a short detail, a detour to check it out. So, I've only done this twice now. I've encountered these multiple times, but only once in off-camera play did I encounter one and once on camera which you just saw and so far I haven't seen any negative effects from it I want to try it out again push my luck an actual bear person oh no uh, the indestructible too not that indestructible this was actually uh, one of my characters I created they died from oh the the hole ran out of my ship I, I chose this guy right here uh, who's named yo-yo ham bear and I renamed him to an actual bear person because I'm, you know, weird. And uh, I'm going to say that's nice. And we got cadaver cadets. Without warning, a group of undead humanoids pop out of the ground surrounding you. You fumble with your phaser, but before you can reach it, they're on you. With resumes in hand, welcome aboard brains, er, friends, plus four crew members. So I'm of the... Uh, belief at the moment I guess I, I I'm tending toward the idea that maybe 
those are always going to be positive things. There's maybe a small chance that they're negative, but three for three on positive. It's a pattern, but it's not a it's not a definite. The deadly space pirate Planetary has escaped prison. He is seeking vengeance on you and your crew for sending him away those long years ago. Um, obviously, we're going to ask the science team to outsmart this foe, but we could also, maybe if we disguise ourselves, or find the perfect place to hide. Uh, the last one is the worst of the choices. We're going to ask the science team to outsmart this foe. You follow the science team's advice and launch an insult bomb to demoralize the pirates into surrendering. All right. Plus seven is going to make only one failure possible, but we got the critical failure. Darn. What happens now? An accidental de detonation insults your science team so badly some resign. Sadly, when Planetary arrives, the insults don't demoralize him. He boards your ship in a murderous rage. Several of your crew die from dissing Terry. We lost eight crew members and... Uh... Yo-Yo Haymbear here just got minus two uh, diplomacy. Which is actually... Not too bad because he only had one diplomacy, so despite it being minus two, we only actually lost one overall diplomacy because they can't go below zero. Astronomical anomaly. We're getting ready. We're getting some strange readings here. Let's set a course. All right, you've encountered a gravestone. We're gonna take another shuttle and pay our respects. Here lies Standing Ted. Ironically, this is not one of my old characters. At least. Not one I named specifically. Here lies Standing Ted, forever standing because there's no down in space. That's nice. It turns out this person was an author, evident from the neatly stacked pile of books. You take a copy of the Big Book of Talkin'. Good. The Big Book of Talkin' Good. And learned something. Uh, this guy got plus one to diplomacy. Moving on. We'll check that out. Uh, Mermat the Lizard. I can't remember anybody's names, but he just gained plus one diplomacy, which makes up for what Yo-Yo Haymbear lost. Quite nicely. Red Eyes, your transporter engineer calls you over concern. The transporter has activated on its own, displaying seemingly random coordinates. The engineer is convinced it's a virus, but you know to call. You know a call to adventure when you see one. We can send a team into the unknown, or we can say let's not beam toward random coordinates. And I've encountered this before, and it takes forever. So I'm gonna say let's not beam towards random coordinates. Moving on. It takes like 20 minutes maybe less a collection of space rocks and debris let's set a course um but there's no real payoff or the bad like there's, there's no real pros or cons like bad things can happen good things can happen yes but overall it's not that bad or good so it's just not worth it luxury cruise you've discovered an adrift galaxy 4 shuttle full of crew that were trying to go on shore leave they're grateful for the rescue, but also a little bummed out that you're putting them straight to work. <laughs> we got four more crew members, making up for the eight we lost, and we will move on to the asteroid, uh, whatever it is here, the, the lonely asteroid. A lonely asteroid tumbles idly through space. Its barren exterior has no distinguishing marks except for a series of short, regular trenches carved across its surface. We can check it for hostile craft, we can take no chances, charge up the weapons, or we can exploit the asteroid for raw materials. As you can see, we have neither of our good options here, but our best option available is to exploit it for its raw materials because it's bravado and that's three versus two and zero. You definitely nudge the asteroid toward a nearby mining outpost using blasters set on low. We'll engage it and hope it goes better than the last one. Not quite as bad, but still bad. Continue. To your horror, the, can the asteroid begins to mine you. Pieces of your ship are flecked off and stored away. You eventually manage to escape, but not before horrible space rock steals. Uh, before the horrible space rock steals some of your hull. Minus three to hull. We're back to where we started, basically. Oh, actually, we might be worse off. No, we're back to where we started. What are our three things here? Mystery. Uh, food. Or food. So I guess that means we have to look at this one. Food or mystery. We'll go to food first. And then if we fail to get the food at this at Class X star, we'll go to the other food. Is that a course? 
robotic hall monitor. Monitor, you clearly asked the text to build you a robotic hall monitor. Run for your lives. I don't understand this. I don't know what just happened. But... Uh, we lost two crew and our captain lost one HP. Moving on, so he took one damage. We can heal that later or not. This is a pretty short game. We are probably about halfway through. You're... <laughs> You, you're hailed by an enterprising young oculoid squiddling in a space cadet uniform. That's cadet, not cadet, in case you didn't notice. Please, Captain, it says, holding a tempting box of baked goods in its tentacle. The pod who sells the most cookies gets to go to space camp. We could say, yes, you've waited for, uh, you've waited all year for these, or no thanks, I'll pass. We get food from either. I think we're gonna say, yes, you've waited all year for these. They're both the same option, essentially. Space Cadet cookies? Oh, hell yes! You sign up for many, many boxes and encourage your crew to do the same. The Squidling is overjoyed. Thank you, sir. Your order will be beamed over to you shortly. Our pod gets to space camp because of you. It gets to go to space camp. Engage! I don't know what the odds here of it going wrong are. Well, you know, the literal odds of it going wrong were equal to the odds of it going well. And it did go wrong. But in... This actual scenario, what could possibly go so wrong? You emptied the Squidling's entire stock and some people will have to wait for their cookies. Lights break out among the crew, uh, among who gets their nickel narfs right away. Space Cadet cookies are yummy, but aren't worth dying for. We, apparently they are, because uh, we lost six crew members, but we gained three food, which isn't much at all. Moving on, that's one of these dots worth of food is three. It's also 10 gasoline, in case you hadn't noticed that yet. Class uh, zero star or class P star. Either way, we're going to be ending up at the Space Alamo. Let's go to this because we didn't get much food from the last one. Set a course. Hopefully it's diplomacy or science based. Hungry and curious. Yes, we got science, which is even better than diplomacy. Hungry and curious, you dock with a warp junction bazaar, promising goods so foreign you'll swear they are theoretical. You approach a cart loaded with glowing vegetables, ready to get what you want. Your orders? We're going to examine the vegetables closely. We could also threaten the vegetable vendor or ask about price matching, but we're just going to examine the vegetables closely for the best chance at success. So these vegetables merit further investigation. You consult your science team for a quick weight check, spot check, pressure rating, invasive x-ray, and particle count. You smile apologetically at the vendor while awaiting the results. Engage. All right, really low chance of failure here, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. Success! I thought that was gonna be the critical failure again, and I was almost very upset. Continue. Okay, fascinating. The glowing vegetables have high levels of the rare mineral Enamolidae. You make a trade and begin serving the strange vegetables with every, every meal. Instantaneously, your erstwhile imbeciles develop resplendent vocabularies. Wow, okay, we got 30 food out of that, that's a decent amount. We lost 30 gas. Comparatively, we got more food than we lost in gas because they they equal out at three to 10. So we got plus 10 trips of gas and minus three, or plus 10 trips of food and minus three trips of gasoline, if that makes sense. And we got plus one to diplomacy as well, which is very nice. Gonna move on to this Space Alamo here, the Takashin hotspot for trade and relaxation. Crew are in high demand to help with the farms. Set a course. I think this means we can trade our crew for something. Um, we, we've arrived at the Space Al Alamo, a popular trading hub for the Takoshins, as well as a variety of other local species. The Chili people seem to run a tight ship around here, so it should it should be pretty safe to stop for a spell. I'm gonna ignore this one as well. This is actually a lot more boring than the other one I skipped. And I assume we'll get another chance. This is this is gonna be like a, a text adventure, basically. Uh, the Space Alamo is renowned for its orbitally grown produce, but there also seems to be a bar along with a few other traders, and we could just keep going through these. Uh, the other thing with the red eyes, uh, it would have been more of a, it's different. You'll see it, I'm sure we'll get one. Uh, classic star, green star, very unusual. Set a course. Alright. Beware Galacula. 
Oh, this is bad. Rumors spread that the terrible space vampire Galacula could be on board your ship. It is said that a vial of ship fuel worn around one's neck can ward him off. Great. Minus 100 fuel. Moving on. We are down to 100 gasoline. We need more fast. Space Ghost. Strange things are suddenly happening aboard the ship. Objects are moving by themselves. You hear knocking, church bells, screaming, and laughter that doesn't appear to be coming from anywhere. You might be infested with a space ghost. Obviously, we want to choose the diplomacy one. Hold the seance, or we could go ghost hunting or call the ghost out. Seance it is. You attempt to communicate with the ghost by holding a seance in your ready room. The, your crew gathers around a crystal ball holding hands and you murmur incantations. I'm going to drink some coffee while we engage this ghost. <laughs> So many failures here. I am not very pleased. Continue. Whatever this ghost is, it doesn't speak your language or it just refuses to listen to you. The ghost mocks you in its own freaky language and continues to wreak supernatural havoc around the ship. Minus three to our hull. We had a great start to this run and not a great finish. So obviously we want plus gas and not plus mystery, but let's take a look at these just in case. We can get two plus gases in a row if we go to this. Set a course. We're very close to our uh, end here, but it's not guaranteed we make it. Stop, collaborate, and listen. Your logistic officer has scheduled an all day team building seminar. Sure, you don't remember their names, but it was sure you won't remember their names, but it was nice to mingle with the Reds a bit. Plus one to diplomacy again. Our diplomacy and science are now matched. Crisis. Visiting the Mechaverse. After a flash of purple light, <laughs> your ship is in another dimension. A mechanical bear wolf and raptor floating before you. Whoa, it's the Mechatars. According to legend, uh, these guys defended the universe from untold terror terrors. Are you a swarm, they ask. No matter what we say, we have to use our attack, and it'll probably go wrong. But we don't want to lose hull. I'd much rather lose mystery and have a chance of gaining gas. So we're going to say, yes, we are a swarm. Figuring that this is probably a code phrase to test your friendliness, you decide it's best to answer in the affirmative. Oh dear, here in the mechaverse, swarms are the enemies. Shields up. Engage. This is not going to go well. There we go. At least it wasn't a critical failure. We still have a chance. Another flash of purple light. You're back home. That was weird. It's even weirder when you spy toys that look like mechatars on the shelf of a convenience store. Needless to say, you are unsettled. We lost one bravado. Did that, did uh, Mermant the Lizard have bravado to begin with? I don't think he did. This was at, no, this was at three, wasn't it? So yeah, he had one of our bravado, unfortunately. I've lost stats from uh, characters that didn't actually have them before, and that's the best option. We are probably not gonna make it to either of these What's the next one though? Hull and um, mystery. Hmm. I think we're just gonna go to this one. That of course. The first time I played, I made it to roughly like where this asteroid thing is. We're out of fuel, we have to engage our SOS. And then I lost all my hull. The second time I played, I won. And then the third time I played, I played the next game mode with the longer, uh, you know, trip, and I won that one as well. Was pretty happy with that. Grobulin science vessel, after some time waiting, a Grobulin science vessel approaches you. Sorry about that. She's willing to give you fuel in exchange for conducting a few science experiments on you and your crew. She promises that your crew will be mostly okay. So we're probably gonna be trading crew away, but I guess so, we need the fuel. It was horrible. Everyone who volunteered for the experiments eventually returns to the ship feeling different. Uh, like pieces are missing at least you can keep moving now so we got 150 fuel which is pretty good I've gotten a lot less from things like this we uh, lost tactics and HP for Mermat here luckily he had no tactics uh, our captain lost some science it's still pretty high so moving on not great but also we're close enough to the end that I think we might be okay planet of the primates you discover a planet populated by humanoid creatures with freakish ape heads. Since they appear to be intelligent creatures, you open negotiations to barter with them. They send a delegation to your ship. We can present banners, uh, 
Banners? We can present bananas to the leader. We can pretend we're in distress or we can ransom their leader. Uh, obviously, diplomacy. It's not only the best option, it's our best option. You welcome to the Council of Twelve Monkeys. Wait. You welcome the Council of Twelve Monkeys to your ship and bestow a lavish gift of bananas on their leader. Engage. <laughs> Hopefully they're the kind of primates that like bananas. This is not looking... Yes! Okay. Awkward. The monkeys are embarrassed because they were going to give you a lavish gift of bananas. After an uncomfortable laugh, they host a cocktail party with tons of banana daiquiris for everyone. You use the leftover daiquiri as fuel. Plus 100 fuel. Moving on. So we can either have two more encounters or one more encounter. We have enough fuel to just do the one. This is our best chance at beating the game. Let's do it. I guess we are not going to get a... Uh, Expedition, except for the one that I skipped before. Uh, that is the red eyes. The bar thing. The Space Alamo. That's not like an expedition one. We only had one opportunity at an expedition and I missed it. I apologize. Peace, love, and understanding. You're hailed by a plump cross-legged alien in a scruffy bathrobe, tube socks, and sandals. Namaste. I am the doting Delai, guru of goodwill. Evil abounds in the galaxy, so I'm bathing. All passing ships in a ray of pure joy and love. Uh, our best option is the diplomacy one. We could thank the guru for his gift. Uh, we can do evasive maneuvers or launch a probe into the rainbow. We're going to do diplomacy for obvious reasons. Engage. All right. There we go. I didn't expect anything other than that. The crew loves everything now. They love their garbage too much to throw it away. They love their clothes too much to change them. They love their food too much to eat it. A few of them starve, but oh well. More to go around. We got 45 food and uh, we lost two crew members, which is a-okay. Pretty much nothing could make us lose right now because uh, we just won. You okay? Oh my goodness. Really? Right before the end? It seems your trusted fuels are. Forgot to screw the cat back on after your last fill up. You've lost quite a bit of fuel due to her negligence. We lost 50 fuel. Oh no, can we make it with just 120? Yes. Mission successful. Congratulations, Mermat the Lizard. You have successfully traversed the Milky Way. Oh, Mermat was our captain? I thought this guy was our captain. I don't know why I thought that. Mermat is clearly in the captain's chair down here doing his little dance. Anyway, we have successfully traversed the Wilkie May in a most daring expedition. Galaxy Force honors you with the title Admirable Diplomat. So we had 14 space encounters, 9 events, 0 away missions. That's the word I was looking for, not expeditions. They're away missions. And 3 graves. Very nice. Continue. It didn't change anything here. We already had this medal. Uh... I think because I didn't do any away missions, I've decided I'm definitely going to be doing another episode of this. Uh, maybe after Nuclear Throne, but maybe before it. Really just depends on how I feel in the moment. And next time, I don't know if we're going to go to Ursa Major, which I've already done, or if we'll go to Space Montezuma's Revenge. Probably Ursa Major. We might as well do it in order. Maybe I'll do six episodes so we get one of each, or as many episodes as it takes to beat them all, which could be hundreds, I probably won't do that. Uh, thank you for tuning in. That is all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you next time.